Today in Watkins Glen, New York, hundreds of thousands of young people gathered for an all-day rock concert. Estimates of the crowd have ranged from 300,000 to half a million. Or as one person said today, it was 95 acres of wall-to-wall -wall people. The one-day concert was called Summer Jam, and it was. There were jams on the roads leading to it. Some people had to leave their cars and walk in from 20 miles away. The concert was held at a Grand Prix racetrack. The music came from a number of rock groups, but the music was only part of the experience. There were reports of drugs being sold and used in the crowd and some bad trips like this one. And many of the scenes today seemed like reruns of Woodstock four years ago. The temperature was in the 80s today at the concert, and by late afternoon, food and water supplies were beginning to run low. But that didn't stop the music. It's scheduled to go on until midnight. And state police at the concert say the crowd there today was causing no serious problems. In fact, one policeman said the young people were better behaved than those who usually go to the auto races there. Four years ago, 400,000 young people gathered for a concert and a happening at a dairy farm in New York State. The vibrations from that event were so heavy that Woodstock became a symbol of the 60s. Today, 120 miles away, there is in the making Woodstock's apparent successor, a thing called Summer Jam. Joan Snyder reports from Watkins Glen, which was a peaceful village with a population of only 3,000. They're calling it Son of Woodstock, the biggest rock music gathering in four years maybe the biggest ever. Estimates of the crowd now crammed together at Watkins Glen, New York, range from 300,000 to 500,000 people. Highways leading to the concert were packed for the last few days, with traffic at a crawl or a standstill. At some points, cars were backed up for 15 miles. The concert, featuring the Grateful Dead, to be followed by the Allman Brothers and the band, started at noon today and will run till midnight tonight. But it's been a lot more than a concert. It's another giant youth happening. And the event started days before the music began, with young people pouring onto a thousand acres at the Grand Prix Motor Racing Grounds. The promoters were allowed to sell only 150,000 tickets at $10 a head to restrict the size of the crowd. But as word spread that this was the big youth event of the year, hundreds of thousands more cascaded in. To avoid any violence, they've been allowed in free to the concert grounds. As at any huge gathering, there's been some trouble. At least five people died in traffic accidents en route to the event. Hundreds of others needed medical care for injuries or drug overdoses. And more than 40 have been jailed for various misdemeanors. No shortage of drugs, mostly marijuana, and mostly overlooked by the police, as at other festivals. But officials here agree that mainly the crowd has been peaceful and good-humored. And it's all very different from Woodstock, where there was a drastic shortage of food, water, and sanitary facilities. After that, New York State toughened its requirements for such gatherings. And at Watkins Glen, there was plenty of free water, a thousand portable toilets, and a good supply of food. The promoters hope to stage another concert here in September. But right now, there's a lot of doubt the community will agree. Watkins Glen just didn't expect this enormous turnout. As the concert began, thousands were still trooping in, some of them having walked more than 20 miles after police roadblocks stopped their cars. Most didn't seem to mind the hardships. Uh -huh. It's like the biggest party in the world. Uh -huh. the best party, too. Just people are all, you know, good, good people. I'm looking for a beautiful time, get nice and hot. <laughs> Freak out. What's the main gate up there? Hang out with my yeah, friends. Best, Nothing else to do in the city. What do you think is the main attraction that brings people here? Wow, I don't know. I guess people! <laughs> I guess a good time. Lots of people. People bring people. Today, there's fun and music. Tomorrow, another logistical nightmare as all those who pack themselves in try to pry themselves out. Joan Snyder, CBS News, 
Watkins Glen, New York. In Dallas today, a protest march by about 1,600 Mexican-Americans ended in violence. The march was held to protest the killing of a 12-year-old boy, Santos Rodriguez, by a Dallas policeman. Organizers of the march had promised that it would be peaceful, as apparently it was, until the end, when small groups of demonstrators ran through the downtown section of Dallas, breaking windows, throwing stones and bottles at policemen, and forcing store owners to barricade their doors. Five policemen are reported injured, three protesters were arrested. The Skylab 2 astronaut team has completed successful launch, orbit, and docking. The men are now checking out accommodations of Skylab, their space station home for the 59-day mission, longest in history. Morton Dean reports. All dressed up and ready to go, the Skylab crew, one experienced spaceman, Navy Captain Alan Bean, he has been to the moon, and two newcomers, Marine pilot Jack Lausma and a civilian scientist, Dr. Owen Garriott. Their ride left right on time. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, we have ignition sequence start. All ignition, all ignitions are running. All engines running. We have a liftoff, and the second man crew has cleared the tower. Major Lausba, an astronaut since 1966, radioed, "We'd like to try that liftoff again. That was great." The rocket ship began to chase its target immediately. That target, the Skylab space station, in orbit around the Earth, 271 miles high, 2,500 miles downrange. Four hours later, the crew caught up with it, found it right where they expected it to be. A problem with a television camera blocked out the bottom half of that picture. That parasol, the sun shield erected by the first Skylab crew, appeared to be flapping in a breeze. Audio parasol, uh, Dick, is really blowing in the breeze. Looks like about a 10 or 15 knot gale every time the uh, thrusters uh, fire in just a very gentle fly around here. Shortly after this fly around, Mission Commander Bean inched his command module toward the space station, docked with it, the successful beginning to what is planned as man's longest excursion in space. Morton Dean, CBS News, New York. The big rock music festival at Watkins Glen, New York is all over now. No doubt there will be a lot of debate in the future about what it all meant. But today the big question was just how to get out of there. The story from David Dow. The end of what may be the largest mass gathering in American history left in its wake a now familiar problem. Traffic, a crowd estimated at 600,000 clogging the same roads it clogged coming in just a day earlier. By midday, more than half had evacuated, many driven out early by a heavy cloudburst. In the sea of mud, they leave behind another problem. Miles and miles of beer cans and wine bottles. Yet there is surprise here at the relatively small number of serious problems. And despite the mud, despite the overcrowding, a feeling of success by spectators at least. Everybody here had a good time. There's no problems. It was just nice being outside. Everybody camped out together. They had some really fine groups here. The best, you know. And uh, like being a part of the whole thing. Now we can all go home and think about it and think of all the good music and all the nice people we met. Promoters are already planning another rock concert here September 15th, the town folk and landlords allowing. Police say it may be midweek before the last appreciative rock fan has left here, another week before the sea of debris is entirely cleaned up. Bigger than Woodstock, they say here, in all dimensions. David Dow, CBS News, Watkins Glen, New York. The Skylab 2 astronauts had to take a break today in trying to set up the Skylab station for their two-month stay in space. The men are suffering from a common traveler's ailment, motion sickness, or what a NASA physician is now calling stomach awareness. Commander Alan Bean told Mission Control, we're just not as spry up here as we'd like to be. The astronauts will take it easy tomorrow, and the spacewalk schedule for Tuesday has now been reset for Wednesday when they should be feeling better. Skylab astronauts Alan Bean, Owen Garriott, and Jack Lossman today were reported still nauseated because of difficulty adapting to zero gravity. Mission Control said that because of this, it will postpone the first spacewalk to Thursday at the earliest. The walk was originally scheduled for tomorrow. Tragedy struck in a mine shaft in Chesterfield, England today. The winding mechanism on a coal elevator carrying 28 men to work broke. The elevator fell to the bottom of the 1,300-foot mine shaft. 13 miners were killed, 
15 seriously injured. A British high court today approved a group settlement for British thalidomide victims. The court awarded $52 million to compensate 433 children crippled because their mothers took the drug while they were pregnant. It is to be paid by a distiller's company, the firm which made and distributed the now banned thalidomide. A federal judge in Virginia has ruled that a reconstruction civil rights law forbids private schools from denying admission to blacks on the basis of race. Fred Graham has the details. Bobby's Private School and Fairfax Brewster Schools, both in suburban Virginia outside Washington, D.C., are small, sedate, and all white, in deliberate contrast to the racially integrated and often trouble-ridden public schools. But these two schools have now become a test case to determine if private schools must also admit Negroes. Some lawyers say the outcome has already been foreshadowed by recent Supreme Court decisions holding that private swimming clubs and privately owned housing units cannot exclude Negroes. Those decisions were based upon an obscure 1866 civil rights law that guaranteed blacks the same right as whites to make and enforce contracts. The same law was invoked by the black parents of Michael McCrary, seen here with his uncle, and another black couple who said the two schools had refused to accept their children because they were black and sued to force the schools to accept the children. Both couples said they had been harassed and would not be photographed or interviewed. Their lawyer, Allison Brown, explained the black parents' position. You can use the word private, but it really isn't private. It's really open to all members of the general public that it uh, may not exclude that portion of the general, a portion of the general public simply on the basis of race. Russell Runyon, the owner of Bobby's school, who wears a cowboy hat to drive the school bus, also spoke through his lawyer, Louis Kudalakis. Any private uh, institution, whether it be a school or otherwise, should have total control of its activities. Unless it's somehow subject to governmental regulation of some type, then if you have to subscribe to that, then certainly you have to meet the standards that uh, public accommodations would require. But short of that, if there's no public funding of any type, and certainly uh, it's the view that they should have total control over what takes place in that school. You mean the right to, ex to exclude they have They have to accept the responsibility. They should have the right to control. I recognize uh, that there is an area of privacy that's protected by the First Amendment and that the civil rights laws do, uh, should not, do not, in fact, transgress that area. Uh, but to the effect that facilities are open up, open to the general public. The cases that we're concerned with say that uh, these facilities that are open to the general public may not discriminate on grounds of race. Is it a question of race? It's not a question of race at all. But I do feel strongly that freedom of choice is a two-way street in this country. And it's about time it was affected in the way that uh, our Constitution uh, was intended for it to be affected. A harder line is being taken by the Southern Independent School Association, which represents about 400 private schools in the South. About half of them do not accept Negro students. The association has joined as a defendant in the suit, saying the member schools have a constitutional right to exclude Negroes. Now that the trial judge has ruled in favor of the black parents, the case is headed for the Supreme Court, which will have to decide which of two traditional American values will have to give way the right not to be denied opportunity on the basis of race, or the right of a purely private school to exclude anybody they wish. Fred Graham, CBS News, Arlington, Virginia.